right uh, in the previous module we started talking about uh, solvation dynamics and then we went on to talk about solvation dynamics of water that's where we stopped and uh, we did not go into a lot of detail but we said that uh, if you take bulk water then the ultra fast solvation dynamics that you see there is not single exponential it is tri exponential or bi exponential with a gaussian component and in fleming's work they have actually been able to assign each of these components to different kinds of motion of water including rotational motion uh, liberational motion and so on and so forth uh, so and your homework was to uh, read that 1994 uh, nature paper and uh, understand we also said that uh, in confined medium the solvation by water becomes slower by orders of magnitude and that is explained once again we did not go into much detail but it is explained mainly by bakchi's uh, model uh, one of which is uh, exchange between bound and free water so today we will uh, discuss a different aspect of water what we'll do is we'll show you the vibrational spectrum of water and then uh, we'll discuss the different normal modes of water not isolated water but water as water liquid and there we'll try to uh, see uh, what happens when uh, one of the vibrational modes is excited how does the energy get dissipated how does it get redistributed in different normal modes of vibration and liberation and uh, this work is mainly by elsisser's group and our present discussion will uh, focus on these three papers that are listed here there has been more work so it's uh, up to you to go and read more recent literature in this topic so to start with let me show you a vibrational spectrum of uh, uh, liquid water and here the only difference between this and the vibration spectra that you usually record is that y axis is absorbance not uh, percentage transmittance as it usually is with ir spectrum but this is a regular steady state ftir spectrum now here you see three major features 1 2 3 and you see a broad feature here and a broad feature here so what are they this one i think everybody knows the one uh, between 3000 and 3600 700 cm inverse that is the oh stretch of water that is the strongest signal and that is what predominates whenever there is anything that contains an oh group you always see this broad absorption that's very very well known the next one also i think is well known it is oh band the third broad absorption here along with this even broader and less prominent feature is ascribed to liberation as we had perhaps talked about in the uh, last module liberations are restricted rotation so your water molecules that want to rotate but then since the hydrogen bonded they are brought back so it is sort of wagging motion and we are all familiar with wagging motion in a molecule for ir so here this is not within one molecule but it is in the intermolecular uh, uh, coupled system a particular water molecule wants to rotate but is brought back because it's hydrogen bonded this kind of motion is called liberational motion of course energy of this liberation motion would be much lesser than uh, your stretch or bend and here it is this is actually called the l2 band the prominent liberational motion low frequency liberation motion here you have some high frequency liberation motion which is not very well defined but will play an important role in our discussions and uh, what are these a b and c we'll come back to that uh, later in a couple of slides so the question that we are trying to adjust uh, trying to understand is this ultra fast dynamics involved in coupling of these modes generally uh, what is the meaning of normal modes that these modes of vibrations are independent of each other but in an uh, in a correlated system associated system when you make one vibration happen it does affect the other vibration so you can think that what happens when hydrogen bonding is stronger what vibrations will be affected what happens when this bending takes place it affects the hydrogen bond dynamics right the moment it affects the hydrogen bond dynamics that is going to affect liberation motions as well liberation motion will be more or less depending on what happens to the hydrogen bond so this is basically what we want to study and the reason why you have coupling between normal modes is if you look at the energy diagram this is what it is this one is oh stretch the biggest energy gap this is oh band and this is liberational motion they might remind you of uh, some uh, asymmetric vibration but the energy gaps are really really small 
as you can see this is the energy gap between 0 and 1 for OH stretch this is the energy gap between v equal to 0 and v equal to 1 for librational motion much smaller. And the notable feature here is if you look at the energy of v equal to 1 of the OH stretch manifold that has more or less the same energy as v equal to 2 of OH band right. So, what happens when they are close what is it called what are the symmetries of vibration of water now C 2 is the point group. So, what is the symmetry of this uh, uh, OH stretch symmetric stretch asymmetric stretch all that thing is there right. So, symmetric stretch is A 1 what is bend you better look up. So, what happens here is that since there is an energy match and there is a match of symmetry as well uh, you have something called Fermi resonance. In Fermi resonance energy can there is coupling between the modes and energy can get transferred between one mode and the other. So, it is not un, unusual to expect that if you excite OH stretch energy will go into the OH bend as well. And then uh, liberations have so many energy levels it is it may be quite expected that no matter which one you excite there will be energy transfer to liberations as well. So, finally, when you make water molecule uh, vibrate let us say excite the stretch that will uh, that energy you give, give some energy for it to uh, stretch right that energy will be dissipated uh, by exciting bending motion and liberations as well. And the times involved are always ultra fast because this v equal to 1 lives for about 200 femtosecond. This v equal to 1 for OH band lives for about 170 femtosecond. And we will see what happens when we look at the uh, normal modes how uh, they evolve. Okay. So, just a reminder L 2 liberation is rotational motion hindered by hydrogen bond. So, if this L 2 band shifts to lower frequencies what does it indicate? that means hydrogen bonds are weakened yeah. So, these are things that we will be looking for OH bending mode now OH bending mode uh, generally we do not even uh, pay attention to this in bulk water because each water molecule in any case is surrounded by so many water molecules. But uh, in a when you are going to make measurements in femtosecond time scale you need to uh, take into account a little more of a detail. And if you are going to work with water clusters where you have a small number of water molecules which you can prepare artificially then also this becomes important and this is what uh, is actually known uh, from this water cluster kind of experiment. It is known that OH bending modes first of all depend the frequency of the OH bending modes it depends on number of intermolecular hydrogen bonds per molecule. So, if it is equal to 4 then you have a higher frequency vibration. If the number of intermolecular hydrogen bonds per molecule is less than 4 then you get a shift. So, the 4 uh, seems to be a sort of a magic number here uh, it does not matter whether you have well how many can you have per molecule that is another question uh, the, there is a reason why 4 is a magic number. How many hydrogen bonds can be th there for uh, water there can be 4 right you cannot have more than that. So, uh, if it is not 4 for some reason then if some hydrogen bonds are broken then there is one kind of lower frequency vibration and if it is 4 if uh, whatever number of hydrogen bonds could be formed is formed then you have a higher frequency vibration. So, this is something that is known. So, uh, the important pathway for energy transfer to surrounding hydrogen bonded network would be of course, by coupling with intermolecular liberational modes. So, the experiment that is done is pump a particular vibrational mode and probe all but all vibrational modes. So, this is an IR pump IR probe experiment okay. pump by a femtosecond pulse in IR not visible or UV and probe in uh, IR as well. With that background we can come back to the earlier diagram and now I can tell you what these are this A B C these are the three spec the these are the spectra of three kinds of excitation frequencies used. When you excite by C and I will tell you what the wavelength is then you essentially excite OH stretch. When you excite this by using B you excite OH bend. 
when you excite by A, you essentially excite liberation. Of course, it might have been better if you could excite here, but there might have been a limitation of the experimental setup. Okay. And uh, these are the frequencies then 3150 centimeter and remember uh, what I showed you earlier is a spectrum not a uh, here this is actually a spectrum same scale and uh, you will remember that a femtosecond pulse cannot be uh, completely monochromatic there is always a spread of energies. So, what we are showing here is the uh, modal frequency maximum of that uh, spectrum IR spectrum. So, when you excite the OH stretching uh, mode that has been done by using uh, pulses which have maximum at 3150 centimeter inverse, OH bending mode is excited using 1650 centimeter inverse maxima pulses and high frequency liberations uh, are excited by 1350 centimeter inverse. Okay. Another reason for not exciting low frequency liberation is that I mean where will the energy go? The, you can only have liberations if you pump at low frequency liberation. right? Only when you excite something at higher energy can that energy go to lower energy modes. If you uh, pump a lower energy mode that energy cannot uh, you cannot have uh, joining up of uh, photons in this case at least. Okay. So, remember this is a spectrum and uh, this is a truncated spectrum actually as I think the probe had a little bit of limitation and in any case uh, it makes no sense to probe uh, the uh, OA stretching mode the only thing that you can see there is a ground state bleach that is going to recover. So, uh, here uh, the study is focused on mainly 1650 centimeter inverse what is that OH bending mode right and here you have all the liberations. So, what do you have before going into each of these quantitatively if you see uh, when you excite the OH stretching mode remember OH stretching mode is how much 3150 centimeter inverse you get a bleach at 1700 centimeter inverse or so. What does that mean? Why would there be a bleach when you uh, pump the why would there be a bleach for the OH bending mode when you pump at OH stretch you are pumping OH stretch and we see there is a ground state bleach in OH bend why would that happen and this is not nanoparticle nothing we will talk about nanoparticles later uh, this is just liquid water. What is the meaning of ground state bleach? In this case, population at v equal to 0 goes down, population at some higher vibrational level goes up, that is a hint. Total population more or less the same. Stretch, yeah, we pump by stretch, then what happens? I have actually shown you the result already. You have to connect with what I have shown you, something that I have shown you. Depopulation of bend, why? Uh, remember Fermi resonance? What happens in Fermi resonance? So, there is direct energy transfer that means population of V equal to 2. Yes, population of V equal to 2 of uh, OH bend takes place by direct energy transfer from the uh, uh, stretch. Remember? Yeah. So, I pump here, right and that is v equal to 1. So, there is energy transfer right. So, some population of v equal to 2 will be there. So, naturally there is depopulation of this OH band energy transfer is taking place. So, it is an excited well vibrational excited state phenomenon that would cause that ground state bleach and here you see this uh, transient absorption positive signal also coming for OH that is because of population of higher state. Okay. So, there is this Fermi resonance this is a uh, uh, clear signature of that. Now, what happens here? There is ground state bleach of L2 as well, and there is ground state bleach here, little bit of growth here. Difficult to analyze this data, but it happens. So, that means since there is a bleach of L2 vibration, that means L2 vibrations are also they also get excited, that means energy gets transferred from stretch to bend and also to liberation. So, question is, is it direct or is it two step? Now, what happens when you excite OH bending mode directly? So, here also you get a ground state bleach which is expected because you are exciting that particular vibration and you get this uh, excited state uh, absorption that is also expected. Once again, you get a ground state bleach here. 
and here you see it is a little different you see a build up the build up is stronger in high frequency liberational mode you see that a little better which means when you make the molecule bend what is happening hydrogen bond network is affected and that is what will affect liberation as well that is what is taking place that is also sort of energy transfer and what happens when you excite high frequency liberations once again there is a ground state bleach here and once again there is this lower frequency transient absorption remember what we said about this higher frequency and lower frequency business for bending motion yeah yes if number of hydrogen bonds is less than 4 then you get this lower frequency absorption so that is why so this might seem a little strange that i am exciting lower energy liberations and i see a ground state bleach in comparatively higher energy bend that is because by doing this exciting this lower energy liberations high frequency liberation what you do always is that you so they are moving like this right so hydrogen bonds will be affected they will be weakened that is why you get this phenomenon here so this is uh, something very interesting because uh, you might not at first glance expect it right you might think that you excite uh, lower energy what will happen this is what happens because we are not working with isolated molecules here it is a hydrogen bonded associated liquid and uh, again you see th there we see a rise of high frequency liberation again we see a ground state bleach here now qualitatively i think we understand what's going on quantitatively if you look at the uh, uh, traces this is what you see when you excite high frequency liberations directly the rise is actually instantaneous uh, this uh, little bit of what looks like a slope uh, that is because of the instrument response function you are not using a delta pulse anyway when you excite OH bending mode do you see the rise yeah this one is instantaneous now compare this with this this is the instantaneous part and there is a rise why, do, why is there a rise look at this energy diagram once again you excite the OH bending mode it is it leaves a 170 femtosecond and in this 170 femtosecond it can either come back to V equal to 0 or it can transfer energy to liberation the rise time that we get here is about 170 femtosecond which means that almost all the energy that you provide in OH bending goes into liberational mode that is why that uh, higher higher V states of liberation uh, actually grow it is no longer just instantaneous a little bit of instantaneous part will always be there because remember we are working with uh, non monochromatic pulses so direct excitation is bound to be there and then you, you are exciting this high frequency liberations as well a little bit but that rise is very prominent and the rise is 170 femtosecond when you excite OH stretching mode then you see that instantaneous part decreases even more and just to the eye has not the growth become more prominent and has not the growth become longer yeah you can see it if you compare these here so here what happens is in fact there are two rise times now analysis of this kind of data is always problematic and to fit a rise time itself is a non trivial task in order to fit uh, kinetics to more than one rise time uh, requires a lot of confidence because as you know if you increase the number of parameters uh, it is going to fit better anyway so your data quality has to be very good and uh, you must be very confident about what you are doing you must make sure that uh, you are just not making up some story that is not right so there again model becomes important and two rise times here sort of okay because here you see two kinds of energy transfer one is from here to from uh, stretch to bend and then from bend to here okay so again we are only providing you the, uh, a, an overall view of this paper please read the paper and see how the data is analyzed so what they have done really is that they have fitted the entire thing to a kinetic scheme so it's like an intermediate right a to i to p when you do that you get a kinetic equation and that is what you have to fit your data to you cannot just fit to two rise or anything okay that is what they have done and they have extracted the two times they turn out to be 170 and 200 femtosecond so 
this is the uh, thing when you pump high frequency liberations okay i don't have to go through each part of it but when you pump high frequency liberation this is what happens you get a broadband enhanced absorption rising towards small frequency which means again energy transfer is taking place and here you get this less than 100 femtosecond decay that is limited by the laser pulse and a very weak 0.9 picosecond component so uh, that slow component is there it's not as if it's not there 0.9 picosecond means what 900 femtosecond okay so you might i might not seem very slow but it is at least uh, slower than uh, less than 100 femtosecond so what what this means this uh, broadband enhanced absorption not easy to handle what it means is that when you excite the high frequency liberations then part of the energy goes right away and part of it goes a little slower which is may not be unexpected because there is always a period of this kind of liberation and motion. 600 to 950 centimeter inverse there is a fast bleach and that is because of and uh, because there is a shift of liberation L2 band to lower frequencies. See what is happening here, here something is rising is not it. Do you see that the signal becomes more than 0 at the very end beyond 600 centimeter inverse. So, why is there a bleach here? There is a bleach because due to high frequency liberations one thing that definitely happens is this hydrogen bond network is disrupted. So, like bending liberation also moves to lower frequencies if hydrogen bond is disrupted that is why you see that bleach. And uh, OH bending absorption there is a slight shift to lower frequency that we have already discussed why. When you excite OH bend then in early time you get a bleach of v equal to 0 to v equal to 1 transition time constant is 170 femtosecond broad absorption at lower frequencies. L later for longer times you see there is a red shift of this absorption and liberational absorption gets reshaped. Why does that take place? Once again because of disruption of hydrogen bonded network okay. and that is what is uh, sort of discussed in this last paragraph. And finally, when you excite OH bend, you see an instantaneous rise in the 1400 to 1610 centimeter inverse, 1400 to 1610 and initial decay is 170 femtosecond as discussed already. This is a V equal to 1 to 2 transition of the OH bending mode, 1 to 2. Longer times the signal is due to overall red shift of the liberational absorption. Okay. And OH stage, I think we have already discussed this Fermi resonance, we do not have to go through it once again. So, finally, the story that we get is that of coupled vibration. And this is, uh, uh, I like this because it is a good example how, of how one can use a pump probe technique to uh, look at very intricate interactions that take place in a coupled system. So, there they have looked at water because you know water is ubiquitous, that is the liquid of life, but one can think of experiments that one can design. Uh, similar experiments on things that are more complicated. Of course, IR experiment in presence of water if you want to look at motion of biomolecules for example, this could be a good way to go. The complicating factor there is that biomolecules are always in water, water always has its very strong absorption because it is a solute anyway, it is present in much more. So, unless you have absorption in some other region, it may be difficult to follow, but it may not be impossible. So, finally, this is the picture that has come out of the whole study. You excite this, uh, I think this is uh, taken from a movie that might, must be available in the uh, uh, somewhere on the website or uh, in the uh, associated contents of the paper. But you excite in 100 femtoseconds, this is the situation hydrogen bond. If I put it very qualitatively, what, what happens is that within the first 100 femtoseconds, the hydrogen bonding network is uh, weakened. And then longer times 3 picosecond or so hydrogen bonds actually get broken and that is what shows up in uh, this uh, red shift of uh, bending vibration frequency and in shift of uh, liberation frequency as we have discussed. So, that is the story of how energy migrates from one mode to the other in uh, associated systems like liquid water. So, I do not know whether anybody has done followed this up later on, it might be interesting to look at uh, well forget biomolecules for the moment even water. So, water confined in a uh, reverse micelle or 
uh, water at the surface of a protein, bound water. What kind of energy migration do you have in case of uh, bound water or inside a vesicle or maybe inside a cell for that matter. But of course, for that we want to do it inside a cell, you have to work with an IR microscope, not impossible, but it is just that we do not have it. IR microscope coupled with femtosecond IR pulse, that is a problem. But uh, this paper is important because uh, see the thing is unfortunately uh, in today's world a lot of research is driven by impact factor which is completely wrong uh, and this paper is published in Jeff A which is the least impact factor journal in the Jeff Fiskem family but it does not matter. It is very good fundamental work and I think it uh, is an indicator of lot of possibility that can open up in this kind of experiments for especially for water in confined environments and perhaps for other molecules as well. Okay. So, that is uh, what I think is uh, one of the most important pieces of work in this field uh, in the last 10-15 years or so.